So obviously today's video is about how to improve at Modern Warfare, how to boost that KD, how to improve that score per minute. And obviously I've done a couple of these videos in the past and I'm going to try and give you different information that maybe I haven't covered in some of those previous videos that I've kind of learned as the game has progressed and time has passed. And I know there's some people out there that are going to say that KD isn't everything and I agree with that. KD is not everything and score per minute is not everything because obviously if I just play shipment all day, I'm probably going to have a higher score per minute than someone who maybe plays ground war or search and destroy or maybe even the 6v6 playlist that can be considerably slower. And given that information, obviously if I just wanted to over inflate my KD, all I do is just camp in a room with some double claymores, EOD, and just make sure I have that 725 handy so that anyone who crosses my path, I can get that one shot kill. But we're not gonna do that. The next thing that a lot of times people bring up is why should they improve? Because skill-based matchmaking's in the game, and obviously that is the case, but I can tell you from experience that as you improve, no matter how hard your lobbies are, you can still be better than the people in them. So that's actually gonna transition us to our first tip, which in my opinion, that is to play ground war. And the main reason for that is because obviously you would have to deal with less skill-based matchmaking. There's obviously a lot of different pros and cons with playing ground war, but the skill-based matchmaking is one of the bigger issues that I think a lot of people are having with this game. And they feel like this mode particularly plays like Battlefield, but in my opinion, I don't think it plays much like Battlefield. Some things it does better, some things it does worse, but at the end of the day, it's still Call of Duty. So some of the other things I like about Ground War besides the feeling that there's less skill-based matchmaking is there's a lot of streak potential, especially if you call in a chopper gunner, a VTOL, a gunship. And obviously on the flip side of that, people can shoot it down faster, but for the most part, you're usually able to rack up a good number of kills. The other part is that it accommodates various play styles and if you put enough time into ground war, you can kind of learn how those various play styles play. Obviously, some people are going to camp certain areas, and that's kind of the main areas that they go to. But after you put in enough time on ground war, it gets kind of predictable where those areas are going to be. It also accommodates for that rushing play style. You just got to learn how you need to navigate around the map, which again takes a little bit of time. And I think it also allows for the opportunity for people to snipe, which some people have a problem with. But again, as you get a little bit more comfortable with playing the specific maps and mode, you'll have a better idea of where those people like to be. You kind of peek stuff identify where the sniper is, and then just completely avoid that sight line, which becomes relatively easy the more time you put into the mode. So the next tip isn't necessarily gonna apply to everyone, but obviously there is a night and day difference between playing solo or playing in a party. There's some people that will run this with four people, but that again comes down to preference. Obviously, if you're playing with a stacked party, you're probably gonna have a little bit of higher KD, but if you're playing with good people, there's gonna be a lot less kills to go around. So if you're someone that normally plays solo, but you would love to play with more people i would definitely recommend commenting your information down below or even checking out reddit there's a, usually a party up thread going on where you can kind of party up with other people that share your interest within call of duty and obviously that goes for all the different modes in the game regardless if you want to do gunfight 6v6 or 10v10 that is a great option to find more people to play with so the next tip is specific to score streaks and what I would recommend doing if you're actually trying to boost that KD is to make sure you're only running lethal streaks. In this particular case, I'm actually only running that cruise missile, running the VTOL, and then I'm running the chopper gunner. If you wanted to go for even higher kill streaks because maybe you're just used to going on longer streaks, I would recommend the VTOL, the chopper gunner, and the gunship. And that's actually going to tie into our next tip, which is related to running kill chain. And the reason I'm running this specific class setup is because I wanna be able to use the cruise missile and make sure that it maybe gets me one, two, and if I'm lucky, even three kills, which will chain me up to that VTOL. I can call in the VTOL and then that'll chain me up to the chopper gunner. I just have to be patient for the VTOL to do its work. So one thing you can change up is depending on the map, you can actually play with these streaks a little bit. I would actually recommend if you're gonna be playing the quarry map on ground war, switching up to the wheelson could actually be a very good option, especially when you run it around the C and B building, you could rack up a ton of kills. So what you would do is make sure that you got it all stacked together and this is gonna come in with the next tip and I'm gonna explain that you want to play for five streaks when you have this particular setup with kill chain. All you're gonna do is get that five kill streak, call in the cruise missile, 
that should allow you to get really close if not actually get you your wheel scent and depending how comfortable you are in the wheel scent I would recommend bumping that up to getting the chopper gunner or the gunship instead of the VTOL so it's all really a matter of preference you're going to kind of figure out what works for you and then once you've kind of dialed it in really all you're doing at that point is playing for bloodthirsties because that'll allow you to actually get your first streak which will change to the second which will change to the third so you don't have to go on these long elaborate streaks so that's the other part that makes this strategy effective for most players because getting a bloodthirsty is relatively easy within call of duty i would say for the vast majority of players but if i'm telling you go on a 12 to 15 streak a little bit harder for most players to do so now that we have the general concept laid out there let's focus on which weapons you should be using and this is going to be different for every person and the reason why i say that is because there's obviously certain weapons that are pretty dominant a couple examples of that are the m4 and the mp5 those generally have some pretty high kds when you look at the global stats on codstats.net and just because those are the best weapons globally and considered part of the meta i don't necessarily think that is the best option when you're choosing certain weapons since i've gone through the entire damascus camel grind i've gotten gold on every single weapon i have stats with pretty much every weapon so i know which ones i do very well with and i know which ones i don't do so well with and looking at the various stats, if I compare all the different weapons, my top four weapons are actually the AUG, the Kilo, the RAM, and the PKM. And all that really means is as you go through your list, you're going to find out which weapons you do the best with. And some of you, that might be the M4, it might be the MP5. Some of you might actually be the M13. It really all comes down to that preference and which weapons that you actually get closer to mastering. So all I'm really trying to say with that is don't use the M4 just because it's the M4 and we know that it's a dominant weapon. Use the weapon that best suits your playstyle as well as gives you the best opportunity to succeed. And I think that's why it's important to look at your individual weapons because sometimes you'll be surprised by that. I didn't realize my KD was higher with those weapons that I listed until I actually went through them. Obviously I know the M4 is the best weapon in general but when it comes to me and how I play, I think there's other weapons that fit my playstyle just a little bit better. So one of the biggest changes that Modern Warfare did this year is they kind of reverted the streak system to what I would call the legacy system, where it required kills, and you're only able to get one set of streaks per life, which is pretty unfortunate, especially if you're trying to go on high kill games, because you end up in this debate or this dilemma, should I end up dying so I can get another set of streaks, or should I attempt to go on the longest streak possible which would be that 30 kill streak tactical nuke. And although the tactical nuke is pretty cool, I think once you've gotten one or a few, I think they kind of get a little bit stale and I'd rather chase high kill games. I've even shown that off in a couple of my previous videos where I did drop a nuke and I almost killed myself when I was on like a 13 streak because I'm like, man, let me just get my next set of streaks. So this is the part where it kind of ties in. You're really gonna have to make a judgment call. Once you get that first tactical nuke, I would say forget about tactical nukes personally and just go for high kill games and the way you're going to do that is not be afraid to die when you are on that streak and have gotten a full set of streaks. And that goes back to what I was talking about earlier. If you're using this particular setup that I've talked about, you're really only playing for a bloodthirsty and you can get a bloodthirsty pretty quick which will get you that cruise missile, which will get you the VTOL, which will get you the chopper gunner. You can actually rack up a good number of kills versus if you're going for that tactical nuke, Pretty much, once you've gotten the VTOL and the chopper gunner, you're going to sit on those because obviously if you call them in, you're likely to get killed if you're actually going for the tactical nuke. You'd probably be running an advanced UAV. Enemy can call on a counter. There's a lot of variables that go on. You end up on like a 25 streak. You run out of ammo or you get in a bad spot. You get pinched. You get insta-killed by a car 98k. And you end up being very frustrated at the game because you're not able to get a tactical nuke versus calling in two or three chopper gunners and you end up with a 50 60 70 even 100 plus game in some cases if everything laid out properly and you got your streaks early enough within the match so i've talked about a bunch of different stuff in the video but not much of that matters unless you actually care about improving and i'm sure if you made it to this point in the video you probably care about doing well within this game. And I'm gonna be honest with you that playtime isn't enough to just improve. And the reason why I say that is just from personal experience. I used to play Call of Duty back in COD 4. I played every single Call of Duty through the years. And my overall stats were relatively stagnant. I usually between a 1.5, 1.7 player, give or take, how long I actually invested in the game. Obviously the more I played it, the KD would tend to rise slowly but usually peak right around that 1.7 KD, 
maybe 250, 300 score per minute, depending on the game. Obviously, in some games, it was a little bit higher. Obviously, some games, it was a little bit lower. And for whatever reason, in March 2017, I actually decided to start improving and trying to look up different YouTube tutorials that I'm sure you guys are doing currently. Obviously, that's why you're watching this video. And I ended up bumping my KD up on average from a 1.7 to like a 3.5. And I'm not saying everyone's gonna see those results from watching YouTube tutorials, but obviously through the progression of actually learning how to play the game, understanding the different things that are actually make you a better player and focusing on your different deficiencies whether you have a problem with centering whether you have accuracy issues because maybe your sensitivity is too high or too low maybe you struggle with understanding how to read the mini map on a consistent basis even on this reduced version of a mini map that we have within modern warfare there are a lot of variables that you can go through and figure out what is the problem with your game and how you can fix it to become a better player and i know there's people that are going to say that i probably take the game a a little too seriously and they just want to chill out and have fun this is how i have fun i have fun improving at the game and performing like i did within the match i ended up going 70 and 6 which was the most kills in the lobby by almost triple so those are just a few of the tips i'd recommend to improving at modern warfare and maybe having a little bit more fun if you did enjoy the video and found it helpful in any way let me know by hitting the like button if you're brand new to the channel or you're part of that 80 percent that keeps coming back for more but forgets to subscribe hit the red subscribe button if you made it to this point in the video i do appreciate all the support you guys show on the channel on a regular basis thank you for watching as always have a great day